Hello, everyone, and welcome to day three of APH's Virtual Excel Camp. Let's give everyone a moment to get settled in their room or chair or whatever position they're going to be in for and get ready to learn with us today. As y'all are getting set up, I'd like to remind everyone to please set their chat to all panelists and attendees or everyone. That way, when you all are sharing in the chat, everyone has an opportunity to see what's going on in the conversation. My name is Jeff Schwartz, and I'm with APH Outreach Services. We are so very happy to have you all again with us today. This week's theme is Oreo and Abakai Camp for ages five through eight. This is our target audience. However, anyone is welcome to join in on the learning and we're happy to have you here. Okay, at this time, I'd like to go ahead and turn things over to our two capable of teachers to, for the week, um, Ms. Amy and Ms. Nina, go ahead. Hi everyone, this is Ms. Nina. Nice to be back today. And hello, this is Ms. Amy. Happy to be here. All right. I'm going to start by sharing my screen because we want to give a shout out to Luke for sharing his extension activity with us yesterday. Here we go. So we are going to just show you what Luke did to make an Oreo abacus model. It was so creative and so cool. And Miss Amy and I had so much fun watching that video. Luke, Luke has chopsticks for his separation bar and Oreos for his one bead and five beads. And he put them on skewers so they can move up and down. It was so awesome. So shout out to Luke. Thank you so much. Good we job. hope to see even more extension activities tonight on the flip. We can share them tomorrow. All right, guys. So we're going to start with an Oreo fun fact. There is an artist. Her name is Tisha Cherry. And she uses Oreos to create tiny artwork pieces. She uses the cream filling and some food coloring and a toothpick as her art tool. On this first slide, we've got two of her Oreo masterpieces. One is a slice of pizza with a ton of toppings, some pepperoni, some green lettuce, tomato sauce, cheese. She has used the cream to create the design of a pizza. Next to that, we have another one of her Oreo masterpieces, and it looks like a wa ocean wave crashing down and she used the cream and swirled it around. Really neat. Here's two more. She made a unicorn with a little heart and rainbow mane and rainbow tail. And she also did an Oreo picture with a man, an astronaut on the moon with an American flag next she has so many Oreo art, art pieces. So if you want to look her up, you can see all the things that she's done. It kind of makes me want to play with my Oreo a little bit and see if I can make something. <laughs> well, all right, the good news is, Miss Nina, that our extension activity tonight kind of relates to this artwork in that we will get a chance to do a little creativity and maybe some artistry with our Oreos. We will. It's going to be fun. All right, guys. We're gonna start doing our chat box check so we can see who's ready to type in the chat box today. Our question of the day for our chat box check is, do you have any pets? You can just say yes, a Y for yes or an N for no, but you can also let us know what kind of pet you have. A dog, fish, a cat, a bird. You can do an S for surprise. You have something totally different, a different pet on here. I am going to put a D. I have one dog. I have oh, an N. I have in the chat a D, a couple of C's. Somebody said two dogs. Two dogs. Okay. Yes, a dog. Another two dogs. Two dogs another dog. Two dogs. Oh, lots of people have two dogs. A lot of work. Yeah. Awesome. Miss Amy has two dogs. Yeah. Great. Well, pets are a lot of responsibility. Hopefully, if you have a pet, you also help take care of that pet, maybe walking that pet or brushing your pet, helping to feed your pet or get put out the water. Cat. Okay. Great. Awesome. All right. Thank you, guys. We are going to 
jump right ahead to our advocates time. We're going to start off with our chance with Miss Amy. All right. Sorry, it didn't come off mute like I wanted to right away. Here I am. Um, we are going to get into our abacus chant today. And since we've had two days to practice, we're just going to try and go all the way through. Okay. So I'm going to remind you of the three different verses. We do our A, B, A, C, U, S, one time for every verse. Remember that spells abacus. Then we're going to go to, I'm going to rock my abacus. The second time is I'm going to count on my abacus. And the third time is I'm going to learn my abacus. And we're going to do it like we've been doing it in an echo where I start with my beat and then Miss Nina and you guys can, can jump in at home. All right, here we go. A, B, A, C, U, S. I'm gonna rock my abacus. A B A C U S. I'm gonna rock my abacus. A B A C U S. I'm gonna count on my abacus. A B A C U S. I'm gonna count on my abacus. A B A C U S. I'm gonna learn my abacus. A B A C U S. I'm gonna learn my abacus. Hooray! Awesome. Thank you guys. I hope everyone was chanting along at home. All right. <laughs> All righty. So we're gonna jump right in now Let's and stop the share. Oh, we sorry. I'm gonna jump right in now to our abacus lesson. And we have done a lot of work on our abacus so far. We have started to explore counting to 10. So today, hopefully by the end of our time for abacus, everybody will be setting their abacus to 10. But no worries if not, because you'll have a chance to practice more each day for the rest of the week. So with that being said, here we go. I'm going to get my abacus cam going with my abacus so everybody can see. Just a reminder of our parts. We have the five bead on the top row of our abacus. It is, we have a five bead in every single column. Underneath that, we have our separation bar. And underneath that, we have our one beads. In order for our abacus to be clear, we have no beads touching our separation bar. As we count, we move our one beads up towards our separation bar and our five bead down toward the separation bar. When we get to nine, just to remind you, we're going to use um, a technique to put both of our thumb and our index finger together on the separation bar. And we're going to open our fingers up to slide the five beads and the one beads away from the separation bar. If you can't do that yet, that's okay. It did take me a long time to be able to get the coordination to do that. It's okay to clear your five bead, then your one bead. But anytime we do a clearing in our ones column and we get take away nine, if we're counting up and we're going to 10, we have to add a one bead in our tens column. And our tens column is one rod to the left of the ones column. Remember, our ones column is all the way over on the right, all the way over on the right. The first column on the right, ones column. The second column going left is the tens. All right, we have reviewed. Hopefully we had good open ears for that. We are gonna go ahead and start counting. So let's go ahead and count one, two, three, four together just to start us off. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Now all of my one beads are touching the separation bar in my ones column. 
this means my abacus is set to four. A reminder for five. When we go to our five, we're only adding one, but we don't have a one bead, we have a five bead. So when we come up with our index finger to the top of our column, of the ones column, we have to bring our five bead down and continue to bring our finger down to slide the one beads back down to the bottom. They're no longer touching the separation bar, only the five bead. So when we have just the five bead in the one column touching the separation bar, that's a five. To add six, I come back to the bottom in my ones and I add a one. So now I have five and a one that makes six. Six is set on my abacus. Let's continue to count to nine. Seven, eight, nine. Now you notice that my ones column is full. All of the beads are, are being counted. So I have nine beads in this column. If I wanna add one more, I have to go to the column to the left, to my next column over, which is my tens column. I don't wanna add a 10 and keep my nines, because that would make 19. 10 plus nine is 19, that's too many. So what we have to do is we need to clear our ones column first by using our little finger, thumb, and index finger together to push up and down and clear. And then we're going to add our one bead in our tens column. Now we have 10. A one in the tens column and none in the ones column. All right, let's clear, all clear. Let's go straight through together this time. We'll practice once or twice and then we'll, do, we'll have you do it on your own. Here we go, starting in our ones column with our one bead. We're just gonna count straight through and I'll go a little slow. Here we go. One, two, three, four, up to my top, five, slide down, six, seven, eight, nine, clear our ones column, 10, adding our one 10 bead in the columns to the left of the ones. That was 10. Let's, let's do it one more time. Clear your, clear your abacus. Here we go. One, two, oops, I put too many. Three, four, five, slide down. Six, seven, eight, nine. Clear my ones column. Ten. My ten is set. Okay. I'm going to clear. This time, I'm going to count aloud. And I would like you at home to practice setting ten on your abacus. When we're finished, I'm going to ask you to go into the chat and I would like you to put yes if you successfully counted to 10 or no for N for no if you didn't think you counted properly. All right. Hopefully everybody's got their abacus at home and ready. Let's count. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right. Ooh, I'm seeing some yeses come up. Thank you, Caleb, Diana, Angeline. Very good. Great. This is awesome. going to be important because tomorrow we're going to count a little bit higher and we're going to think about different concepts. I'll give another moment or two mm -hmm. to see oh, if good. I get Some more yeses coming up. So far, no no's. So that means you all are doing great at home. Very we're going to play a game where you guys are going to count on your abacus. 
So I'm going to reshare my screen again. Okay. I'm going to reshare my screen with sound. It's going to be a listening game. Here we go. All right. Okay, Miss Amy, let me know when it's up. Good? Yeah, where are we? Okay, it is up. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to use our abacus for this game. It's going to help us practice setting numbers. So we are going to listen as Miss Nina plays us some sounds. What we're listening for is the sound of a bird and Miss Nina is going to play it for us. Here's the sound of the bird. You guys hear that, that bird sound? Could you hear it, Miss Amy? I could hear it, yeah. Okay, good. That's the bird sound that we are going to be listening for. It's hidden all throughout here, all these little sound icons. Some are birds and some are not. Okay, now that you, the, the bird sound will only sound like the sound we just heard. So if you hear another sound that doesn't sound like that sound and you're not sure if it's a bird sound, it's not the sound we're looking for, just that exact sound. So Miss Nina is gonna play all of our sounds and every time you hear that bird sound, I want you to set one on your abacus. So we just heard a bird sound. It was the first bird sound. So I would go to my abacus and I heard the bird sound. So I am going to set one. The next time I hear the bird sound, I'll have two on my abacus. The third time, I'm gonna have three on my abacus. So every time I'm gonna add one. Okay, all right. So we already heard that first bird sound. So everybody set one and I'm gonna continue. Ready? Okay, type in the chat how many times I played a bird sound. Okay, good, I see a seven, seven, six, seven, seven. You know, one was super tricky because I played two bird sounds back to back. Right, great job guys. I actually did seven of these were bird sounds, but one was back to back. So it might've sounded like just a really long bird sound to you. Awesome job. Yes, there were seven of these little sound icons had a bird sound with it. So everyone should have a seven set on their abacus. I will stop my share so that Miss Amy can put a seven on her abacus and we can make sure that you guys have the same thing. Okay, my seven is in the all in the ones column. I have two one bead set and one five bead set. So two one beads touching the separation bar and one five bead. Hopefully everybody's abacus looks like this seven. Yeah, if you were setting a seven and that's what your abacus shows, go ahead and give us a thumbs up if you set that 
seven correctly. Or you can do a, a Y for yes, or a thumbs up, or a happy emoji. Good, okay, see some thumbs up, a yes, yes, great, that's an awesome job. Great job listening and great job using the Abacus account. Awesome, okay. Great job. Now I am going to share my screen again. So we're going back and forth, share my screen again, because we are already ready for our experiment time, for our investigation. Today we're going to be exploring ramps and making inclined planes to roll our Oreos down. We will experiment with how changing our inclined plane affects how far our Oreos can roll. And we will be able to give examples of ramp and inclined planes that we can find out in our environment and in our community, okay? So before we begin, we're gonna use our body to help us act out an inclined, an inclined plane. Stopping my shape again, so you guys can see me or Miss Amy. You can um, spotlight me because we're going to use our bodies to act out an inclined plane. What is that? What in the world is it? We are going to place our arms or our, one of our arms flat on the table in front of us. Just whoop, place it down flat. Ugh. There we go. Putting my arm down flat on the table. And I'm going to keep my elbow down on the table, but I'm going to lift up my hand. And I'm going to take my other hand and kind of slide it down my hand and my arm. Whoop, that's my inclined plane. I made an inclined plane with my arm. I can make it steeper. Whoa. Here. Whoa. I can make it really low. Okay, I can change how steep my inclined plane is. I'm moving my arm. An inclined plane is just any slope surface like a slide or a ramp. So we're gonna take a moment to think about where we have seen or found ramps or inclined planes out in our community. I want you guys to take a moment to think, but then type those ideas in the chat. So we can share those ideas with everyone. Where have I found a ramp or an inclined plane? I see bridge mm -hmm. in our chat. Good. Slide. A slide at the park. That's a fun inclined plane. Slide. <laughs> Another slide. Mm -hmm. Great job. Sidewalk. Very good. Mm -hmm. Oh, your driveway. Your driveway goes up a little bit. Great. Now we've got some picture examples of some of these, but some of these ideas Miss Amy and I hadn't thought of. So great job, a wheelchair ramp, yep. So someone can go up the ramp instead of up the stairs. At the corner of your block, there's an inclined plane, okay? Great. I'm seeing some things that might be learned in orientation and mobility with the sidewalk and the um, ramps at the end of the corner. Very good. Oh, a bike ramp. That's yeah. an ECC skill. That's that word from yesterday, the expanded core curriculum. O and M, orientation and mobility is ECC. Important stuff. These are a bike ramp. That's a great idea. That's another fun one. So I'm gonna share my screen so I can share some of these pictures. Oh, at your doctor's office, they have one. All right. I'm going to go to the next slide. So I've got some pictures here. Some of these are ideas that we saw in the chat. These are pictures, two examples of ramps to get from the street up to the curb or to go up the ramp instead of going up the stairs, perhaps if someone's pushing a stroller or if someone's using a wheelchair, they can go up the ramp instead of using the stairs. So we've got two pictures of ramps out in the community. Ah, here I've got two pictures of slides. One is a red slide with a ladder you can climb up. You might find it at a playground or in someone's backyard. And the other one kind of looks like a rainbow. It's six slides all next to each other in different colors. And they're actually water slides. <laughs> Got some water slides there. 
That one looks really fun. Oh my goodness, yes. It looks really steep though. Oh, here's another example that Miss Amy and I found. It's actually a close-up picture of the roof on somebody's house. And it's covered in snow. And the snow is kind of sliding off of this planted roof. Right? Some people's roofs are shaped like that, an inclined plane. It helps the snow slide off so it won't just sit on top of your roof all winter. Oh, so this is a skateboard ramp. I know someone wrote down bike ramp as a great idea. And I have a skateboard ramp in here. And here's a picture of somebody kind of jumping up on their skateboard. And behind them is a small inclined plane, a small ramp. And I bet they can start at the top and zoom down. And we saw some people mentioning sidewalks and roads. And so here is a picture of a road. And there's a sign kind of warning the drivers that they're going to be going up. The road was built at an incline plane where it's safe for the cars to go up that big hill or up the mountain. So we find them out in the road as well. Here's just one more sign. This is a, a sign to let uh, someone driving a truck know that it's probably a pretty steep incline coming up. All right. So those are just some examples. And I bet as you guys go on, if you explore your communities, you'll find even more. Okay. So today our experiment, or our investigation, sorry, we're going to be making inclined planes and rolling our Oreos down them. And we're going to be finding out how changing our incline plane affects how far our Oreo can roll. Okay. So we will need to make a paper track so we can keep our Oreos from like rolling away and rolling off our table or rolling away from us in our house. So Miss Amy is going to show you guys how to make a paper track for your Oreo in just a moment. But let, let's give you guys a moment to gather your materials because you'll need to gather the paper that we're gonna use for the track. You can get just regular printer paper or construction paper or Braille paper, if you have any, works really great because it's nice and stiff. Okay, but any paper will work. You need about six pieces of paper because I think our Oreos are going to roll pretty far. We want to make sure our track goes all the way across our table or, or all the way across our floor. You need a binder or something, binder or book, something you can use to create that inclined plane with, a folder that you could hold up, anything stiff that you could kind of roll your Oreo down. You're going to need some Oreos, not too many, just a couple today. And then Miss Amy has a great idea. We want to be able to mark on our track where our Oreos roll to. So whatever works for you, you could get out a dark marker. So you could mark with a marker on your paper track. Miss Amy, I think, is getting some clothespins out because she's just going to clip it on the side of her track to mark where that Oreo rolls to. If you have wiki sticks, or if you have tactile dots or tactile stickers, something that you want to mark your paper track with so you can remember where that Oreo rolled to, because then you're going to change your ramp and roll another one. And we want to be able to compare which one rolled further. If you oh. use a tactile mark, try and put it on the side of your track because you wouldn't want your Oreo to run into it and stop your roll. So, yeah. So I'll stop sharing while you guys take a minute to grab those things. When you're back and ready to start making your Oreo track with Miss Amy, just give us a thumbs up or a yes or something in the chat so we know you're back and ready to start folding that paper. I'll stop my share so we can stop light in this conversation. I've got my paper. Oh, and if you have tape, you might want to tape your pieces of paper together at the end. But if you don't have tape, it's okay. I see Luke is ready. Awesome. Luke's ready. He's got his paper, got his thing, got my paper. Thumbs up. More thumbs up. Yes. Great. You guys are fast.
wait for like another friend or two. Okay. All right. Maybe we can get started on the tracks because you have to do it like six times. So we'll get started now and then everyone can catch up and zip through it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you're on mute, Miss Amy. Oops. Okay. We so are we ready to make our track? Ready. So I'm holding my, and I have braille paper, but a regular sheet of paper, it's a regular size paper, will do just as well. And the way I think I'm going to hold my paper is just as if I was going to either put it in my braille writer, if my holes, if I had holes in this paper would be on the left, or if I was going to write with the paper being long ways away from my body, okay? And I'm going to take from the left-hand side of my paper, maybe uh, about an inch in, and I'm going to make a fold down the whole long way side of that left, the whole long way side. So one, the left-hand margin of my paper is now folded and it's sticking up because when I folded it, especially with my braille paper, it's nice and firm and it sticks up. Regular paper would stick up too. Now we're gonna go to the right-hand side of our paper and do the same thing. So we are going to, and it doesn't matter if you started on the left or the right, just we'll do the same thing to both sides. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just need edges there so our Oreo won't roll away from us. <laughs> right, and so this is our track. This is one piece of our track. We wanna try and put maybe five or six of these together. So go ahead and fold a few more. And when I get my second piece folded, I will alert you again to what I'm doing because I want to show you how I fit mine together. So I'm going to fold my second sheet through my fifth or sixth sheet the same exact way. And they don't have to line up perfectly with each other too. They kind of will fit in each other just fine. All right, now that I have my second piece lined up, I'm going to show you by holding it up that I'm going to place my first piece just overlapping my second piece. So one fits inside of the other. Again, it's not perfect. My sides are a little different sizes, but when I lay them down on my table, I'm just going to have a little seam in the middle of my paper, but my sides will continue. That way there are no holes in my track. I don't want my Oreo to roll and then find a hole in the side of my track and go out and go rogue on me. Then I won't be able to find it. Or in my case, one of my furry friends might find it before I get to it. So this reminds me of when I'm bowling, Miss Amy, and I put the guardrails up on the sides so and my bowling ball can't go in the gutter. Good one, Miss <laughs> Amy. Feel from rolling where we don't want it to go. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and place yours one by one, just like yeah. that, so. And we were thinking, the reason why we said five or six pieces is because your Oreo, it might roll pretty far. It might even roll off of five or six pieces, but when Miss Amy and I were testing it out, oh, six pieces, we, we couldn't get our Oreo to go farther than that. Maybe you guys can. So you kind of need a lot of space in your work area. You might need to, Move yourself to the floor. If your table is not big enough for the track, mine is not, so I would have to put all my things on the floor. Enough space in my room to lay my track down. All right, and I will I will turn my camera. It'll be a little hard to see just because the camera is not super great and it's going to be a really wide angle of my track, but I will project that while we're doing at least one roll mm -hmm. so everybody can follow along and I will tell you what I'm doing while I'm projecting that or Miss Nina will. Sounds good. Yeah. So what we're going to do and you guys can keep building the track while we're explaining, but we're going to lay down our track and put our ramp at one end, you might be using a binder, a book, a folder, a clipboard, anything that you found that you can hold up like a ramp for your Oreo to roll down. So we'll set that up together. And there are different heights or positions that we can put our inclined plane in. We know 
some are can be steeper than others. We saw that really steep slide. Whoa, that you go down really fast. But if there's a ramp that I'm going to be pushing a stroller up, I don't want it to be that steep, right? We want it to be a little bit more gradual and easy to go up. So we're going to change um, our incline, and we're going to de determine how that impacts how far our Oreo will roll. All right, so I will share my screen again. And hopefully everyone is finishing up building that track. If you need a parent's help, just lead you along and get them um, taped together and a nice big space in your house. Go ahead and do that. Oh, here's Miss Amy's example of a track. Oh, in this picture, this is Miss Amy's track. And this is after we had tested this out. And so she had some of those clothespins actually pinned to the side to remind us where each of our Oreos had rolled to. So hopefully you've got something you can mark your track with. If your track is ready and your ramp is, you've got a ramp that you can position, go ahead and give us a yes or thumbs up. I just want to make sure at least some friends are ready to start with us before Miss Amy and I start. I'll, I'll make one more piece to my ramp too. Okay, Luke is ready to roll. One more piece for my ramp. I don't want it rolling on my floor. Okay, see another thumbs up. Great, you guys are getting your ramps ready. Whoa, mine is really long. I'm gonna put it on my floor. Miss Nina, are we ready to think about predictions or yeah. is it too soon? Yeah, actually. The first thing that we're going to do with our ramp is we're going to position it in the low position. So let's think about how far you think your Oreo is going to roll when we have our ramp in a low position. For my ramp, since I'm using a big binder, I'm just going to put it flat on my floor, and that's my, my low position. You get to decide how you're going to position your ramp, but we want to keep it kind of low. This reminds me of maybe a ramp I would feel out, out in the community going up a ramp by a curb or something, kind of a low ramp. I wonder how far your Oreo is gonna roll when you roll it in this from this position. Think about that for a moment. Get a prediction in your head. You think it's gonna roll so far it goes off your track? You think it's not gonna go very far at all? No. Is it going to roll super fast? I'll stop my share in just a moment so that we can watch Miss Amy do hers. And you guys should be doing yours along with Miss Amy if you're choosing to do this investigation at home, okay? Okay, I'm going to leave my microphone on and maybe you'll be able to hear me across my table. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera. Okay, and I will stop this here. <laughs> this is our example of a ramp that's kind of in a low position, a gradual incline. I stop my share and we'll spotlight Miss Amy. All right, so Miss Amy's going to hold her Oreo at the top of her ramp. Whoop, oh, she's getting it out. Oh, Luke, you did it and it didn't go that far. Let's see Miss Amy's. So Miss Amy's gonna hold it at the top of her ramp. Her track is ready and waiting. And let it go, Miss Amy. Here we okay. go. You let it go. Oh. Oh. Actually, I had a marker on my ramp right where my cookie actually. Oh my goodness. Oh, how? Because we've done this before. <laughs> well, so, it's just like Luke, it didn't roll that far, Miss Amy. It was like one piece of paper. Hmm. One piece of paper, I'm at about, well, yeah, about, maybe not even a whole piece of paper because I have a whole piece of paper on my ramp. Oh, I see. And then I have in the mid, a little further than the middle of my next piece of paper, which is the flat part of my ramp, is where my cookie fell. So only, it only rolled about a half a piece of paper length. That is, that's not that far. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay. 
friends, I hope you tried that at home too. I can see that Luke did and his also didn't roll that far. But what if we, and Miss Amy, you can stay there, but I'm gonna share my screen again because I'm going to change my ramp a little bit. I'm gonna hold it up. You might wanna put it on a couple of books if you have them nearby or a little, maybe a box you have nearby, or you can just hold your ramp up a little bit steeper. All right, so now my binder that I'm using for my ramp is not flat. I actually held it up a little bit and I'm gonna roll my Oreo down again. Miss Amy, what are you using to make your ramp? So I, I, can you hear me okay? Yeah. I still have my binder, but underneath my binder, I put my Oreo box. Oh, that's a good idea. So I have one Oreo box underneath my binder and then my binder. So now I have a steeper incline, okay? Oh, I can tell, yes, I can tell you put it on that box. What a good idea. So friends at home, go ahead and position your, your ramps so that they're a bit steeper. I like Miss Amy's idea. You can also just hold it up if you don't have your Oreo box nearby. And let's let it roll. All right, here we go. Put it at the top of your ramp and let go. Whoa! Oh my goodness! Wow, Miss Amy. One, two, three. It went three whole sheets of paper and then into my fourth sheet, maybe about, oh, not very far in, maybe an inch. So I'm, I'm going to put another. Close pin. So right it rolls there. a lot farther when you put your ramp up, made it steeper. I wonder if anyone else had similar results. If you if your Oreo like falls over or if you want to try it again from that same position, go ahead. You can try it again from the same yeah. position. Here, I'll try it again. To do things more than once because you never know, maybe. Oh, mm -hmm. Miss Amy, it rolled so far I can't see where it went. <laughs> it went off my table that time. So the first time I rolled, my Oreo rolled a little bit into my side and that made it stop. But that second time I rolled, it went right off of my ramp and it onto the floor. Luckily, it went off the table too. Maybe, maybe it's the time to move your ramp uh, down to the floor. <laughs> wow. Well, if it went farther, our ramp was steeper, it went farther. Well, we have, we have enough time. Let's do another one. I'm gonna I have it. another box. Okay, all right. Miss Amy's gonna make hers super steep. Miss Amy, is yours straight up and down yet or no? It's not quite straight up okay. and down yet. Um, I can make it so that it's a little more up and down. There we go. Nope, that looks really steep. Like that's the really kind of thing I maybe I want to go sledding down a hill. And this is this is where I'm making my prediction now, and I hope that everybody at home is also making their prediction. I've just done two trials at different inclines. One was low, one was medium. Now I've got a super high one. I'm thinking, hmm, how is that going to impact how far my Oreo rolls? Am I going to need to run across the room before it rolls off my table? I don't know. I guess we'll see. All right. All right. At home, you guys can set your incline to make it as steep as you would like and see what happens. Let's let the Oreos roll. Here we go. And it's off again. Off the table again. Yep. It rolled really far. I guess I should move some chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. I wonder if there's um, such a thing as being too steep. Hmm. I wonder what would happen, Miss Amy, if you made your ramp like straight up and down. Whoa, like almost straight up and down. What do you guys think will happen? I'm going to see if I can um, share my screen. I think I have a picture of myself. I was holding mine almost, almost straight up and down. Almost. Just like Miss Amy's doing. I wonder if it's going to roll the farthest ever or if we're gonna get some different results. You guys are at home and you wanna give that a try, go ahead and position your ramp. You might need to hold it. You might not have enough boxes and things to get that ramp <laughs> straight up and down like that, super steep. So this right here, if, if you are a student who takes orientation and mobility, this is perpendicular. 
It's a mm. big word. That means one is going straight one way and one is intersecting straight the other way. All right, are we gonna see that? It's even steeper, so I'm wondering if it's gonna roll even farther. I don't know. What? what? Did everybody hear that? Here, I'm gonna try it one more time. Listen. Miss Amy, it sounds like your Oreo just crashed to the ground. My Oreo just got weathered. <laughs> <laughs> Remember from Monday how we talked about weathering and our Oreo broke into pieces? Well, that rock falling off of maybe that virtual cliff just broke my Oreo into a piece. Oh, so that was too, too steep. Too hmm, steep. I wonder what the, I wonder what the like, perfect, perfect incline would be. So maybe after we're done today, if you guys, since everyone's Oreos maybe seem to be rolling off the table, maybe you need, maybe your track needs to be like eight or nine pieces of paper long. <laughs> so you can always add to your track, move your position, because you might need to move away from the table and go to the floor where you might, a hallway maybe, where you might have more space. And you should, guys should try it again and try all different inclines and see what the difference is. See if you can maybe predict how far it will roll or try and find an incline that will roll it exactly three pieces of paper or exactly four pieces of paper. You can try all different things. You can even take away your incline and just roll your Oreo flat on your track and see what happens. All right. I am excited to find out what happens when I try that after class today. Excellent. Right. You guys oh. have done a great job. Thinking of strategies too, and, and some skills that we could use. Um, one of the things that Miss Nina and I did was we put numbers on our clothespins and that showed us one, two, third roll, fourth roll. And so if you have different inclines, you say, well, my first incline was a low incline and then I can mark it and then I can compare just like we were comparing with our graph the other day. Yeah. Um, or if you mm. use braille, you might use a piece of braille sticky paper, maybe put a one there, or you could write um, low, med, M-E-D, short for medium, H for high, or just do the first letter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on your on the side of your track, and then go back and find it and compare how far each Oreo rolled. Well, we hope that you guys have fun exploring more of that after class today. We have one more thing to show you guys. We told you earlier when we were looking at the Oreo artwork by Tisha Cherry that our extension activity today was going to involve kind of playing with your Oreos. So you guys can use the Oreos that you've touched and rolled today since you're probably not going to eat it, right? Since it's rolled off the table and onto the floor. <laughs> you can just use those Oreos. And we are going to be creating a model of an eye today. So I'm going to share my screen. Miss Amy is going to talk a little bit about what part do we want to see in your Oreo eye model? Okay. What part should we include? So this eye model is a drawing of one human eye. The eye is open. It's the eyeball and the part surrounding the eyeball. And it's looking at the eye from the front. If you were looking at a person from the front of their body. Okay, this eye has an eyebrow above the actual eye. The eyebrow on this model is sort of a brownish color. I'm gonna feel my face and find yeah, my Let's eyebrow. all feel our eyebrow. I'm gonna find mine. Yep. I wonder if anyone knows what the eyebrow is for. You think you know, you can type it in the chat. Yeah, it serves a purpose. Does anyone know why you have an eyebrow? So I can raise them up and down like this. <laughs> you can raise them up and down, mm -hmm. can't you? <laughs> show my expressions. Mm -hmm. I don't see anybody answering. 
So I'm going to go ahead and tell you that it just, it helps, it's protection. There are several features of your eye that serve as protection. So if you're sweating really hard and your, your sweat is coming down your forehead, your eyebrow kind of catches that sweat before it goes in your eye. Um, sweat stings. So, you know, your eye doesn't really like it that much when it gets in there. But yeah, that's one thing that helps with. It's also, you know, part where you might bump your head a little bit more because that's the part of your head that sticks out. Your skull starts to round back there. So maybe it also offers for a little bit of padding if you do bump. Um, so the eye shape is an, the shape of an almond, sort of um, circular almond-like. If you've ever seen an almond nut, it's sort of like that. You can actually feel your eye area to see what yours feels like. And then the top portion of that almond is the eyelid. The eyelid opens and closes. It also serves as protection of your eye. Sometimes when something comes at you fast, your eye closes and that protects the inside portions. Um, and then sometimes it helps with clearing dust and things out of your eye. Yeah, I see someone wrote dust. In the oh, house. the oh. dust. Yes. <laughs> read my mind. Um, and you know, your eye has moisture in it. It's, it's wet. And so it helps to spread the liquid in the eye. Our eye, if it gets too dry, it can be painful. So it's important to have that eyelid opening and closing. Okay. Um, on the eyelid, I forgot this part, are your eyelashes. Oh, I can feel mine. We can all feel our eyelashes. Some of us have really Fairly. long ones. Some have really short ones. They all come in all, just like everything. Everybody's eyes are different. So mm -hmm. some people's are different. Um, I've even seen people without eyelashes, but eyelashes are hair above your eye. They're also meant to catch things like dust. Okay. Um, in the lower portion of the open eye in this picture, the outer semicircle is a white, the white portion of your eye, and that is called your sclera. We're not going to touch these. Now what's up? <laughs> you probably don't want to put your finger no. in there. <laughs> okay. Right in the middle of that, you can kind of think of it as another circle. The white surrounds the next circle which is the colored portion of your eye called the iris, the iris. So some people's irises are brown or black, some are blue. On this eye model, it's a blue iris. We just made it that way to stand out. Um, some are, people have green or hazel eyes. They're all different colors. And that part actually has muscles in it that helps to adjust the next part, which is right in the center of that iris. It looks like a black dot, but it's actually just a black space. It's a circular black space called the pupil. And the pupil is what opens and closes to let light in your eye. And the most, you know, light drives how we see things. So that is the eye model. I did not miss anything in it. Did I miss Nina? No, nope, you got everything. Right. This, you're, okay. this is a typical human eye, but like many things in life, we might all have some differences with these parts. And so you might see this and think how maybe your eye parts are the same or are different. But one part of our ECC is to learn about eye anatomy. It's a part of self-advocacy to know ourselves and to be able to explain for other people. So it's important to know eye anatomy and that's why we teach it, but we're gonna have fun with it tonight. Yeah, so this is our, our outer eye and that's what we're gonna, those are the parts we're gonna stick to in our Oreo eyeball. So here's an example. So in Flip, Miss Amy has a video reviewing the eye parts and describing the activity in more detail. But pretty much we're just using our Oreos and anything else you find in your house or your pantry to represent those parts that Miss Amy just described to us. So I took my Oreo and I twisted it open so I could see all that white cream inside because I wanted that to be the white part of my eye, the sclera. I used a sour warhead candy a blue one as my iris, <laughs> and I use a mini chocolate chip as my pupil. 
I used a purple crayon or marker to draw my eyelid and eyelashes. And then I used some cashews to make a big bushy eyebrow on top. <laughs> okay, you guys can do anything you want. You can use craft materials or you can use all food. But we want to try and use those Oreos in there and see how creative you guys can be with these eye models. If you want to, you could label the parts for us or in your video, you can point them out and tell us what you use and what part of the eye that is. So we're gonna try and include all those parts, all right? So we are really excited to see everyone's Oreo eye models that you guys put together and post for us on Flip or email. And we can share some of those pictures on our first slide tomorrow. Maybe if you guys wanna take a moment and start thinking about what you might use, you can type your ideas in the chat. Maybe you're going to go get some, I don't know if anyone has licorice. Hmm, what do, you, what do you have in your house that you think you could use? To share your ideas in the chat because it might help someone out. <laughs> and I think that we have it set so that each video is one minute. So I may go in and expand that if I can in our flip, just to allow for a little bit more time in case you do want to explain your eye model a little bit and identify your parts. There's a saying, teach that of which you want to learn. So you be the teacher tonight and you teach us about your eye parts and tell us about it. That kind of helps as a strategy for learning. I had trouble thinking of what to use for eyelashes. I wonder if anyone has any good ideas why I used a crayon. I couldn't find anything in my pantry. Hmm. And you can do something different than Miss Nina too. You oh, don't definitely. have to keep your, your Oreo open like she did. You could crush it up. You can break it Ooh. into parts or pieces. Just thinking you can, about it. You ideas. can roll your cream into a ball. Huh, yep. into your eyeball. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop my screen share because I see we've reached the end of our time. Okay, maybe some nuts. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing an idea. All right, I'm going to stop my share. I see that we're reaching our end of our camp day. You guys did a great job. I hope that you guys continue to change your ramp incline and to keep rolling those Oreos down the track to see how far you can get them to roll. Hope you guys continue to do that after we get off today. I know I will be. Oh, and just one more little thing about Flip. Your parents can put it on a phone device, an iPad, maybe a tablet, but it also can be used on the computer. So when you get your extension activity with the directions, you'll see that there's a link in there. If you're on a computer, you can click that link and then it'll help you to be able to sign up. It is free to sign up. So hopefully we'll get a bunch of good responses tonight. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. I'm really wondering how our young campers are going to resist eating these Oreos yeah. while trying this ramp practice, because even that five second rule on the floor when they roll <laughs> <down> there. <laughs> Anyhow, I would like to thank both of you for a wonderful lesson today. Again, our teachers, Amy and Amistina, for a great lesson. I'm going to pause our recording now.